With AMD's Ryzen 7000 series nearing launch, it's expected that we'll probably start to see some leaks surrounding the desktop series surface the web, and recently there has been quite a bit of interesting information I wanted to share with you guys and give my thoughts on, so let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. As you all probably can expect by now, whenever there's new hardware set to launch in the near future, we always start to see rampant rumors and leaks pop up on the internet surrounding that series or product. AMD's Ryzen 7000 series is no exception. As we get closer to launch, we're starting to see info pertaining for the series. Most of this info has been out for a while now, and some of you have probably already seen it. I wanted to make this video earlier, but just couldn't find the time to do so, but there was some info that caught my attention that I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on, so it was worth making this video. The first bit of info was from known hardware leaker on Twitter, Graymon55, who posted a lineup of Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, stating this info was from a known AMD CPU reseller. So in this lineup, we see the Ryzen 9 7950X, Ryzen 9 7900, Ryzen 7 7800X, and finally a Ryzen 5 7600X. A lineup which basically mirrors the lineup we got from AMD during Zen 3's launch in 2020. Honestly, anybody could have probably guessed this lineup, but what's interesting is that they mentioned there is no 7700X in the lineup, and absolutely no mention of a R5 7600 for that matter. Which is somewhat of a shame, it seems like what AMD is doing here is the same strategy they utilized for Zen 3, where they're going to be capitalizing on the initial hype and sell as many high margin parts as they can and then when that starts to roll off or Intel puts them on the spot with a competitive series, they'll release some more cost effective options like an R5 7600 or R7 7700X. With that said, it becomes quite apparent why they're doing this and the reason for that is simply money. Think about it, had AMD launched an R5 5600 and R7 5700X alongside the 5600X and 5800X respectively, then hardly anybody would have purchased the more expensive CPUs. Various PC hardware reviewers have shown that those CPUs perform very close to their expensive counterparts, so those premiums just aren't justifiable. In regards to pricing, while we don't have leaks or rumors pertaining to that, nor has AMD shared anything themselves, I've got a pretty good feeling you can expect these these next-gen Zen 4 CPUs to cost the same as what their Zen 3 predecessors cost, which if you remember might not be the greatest move for an R7 7800X. At the beginning, the R7 5800X was perceived as poor value, being priced too close to an R9 5900X, and it wasn't until there were significant price drops from retailers that made it more appealing. Also during Zen 3's launch, there was also a pretty severe CPU shortage as well, where high-end CPU SKUs like the Ryzen 9 5900X or popular mainstream parts like the 5600X were just as hard to find as GPUs. So I do know a lot of people who said, screw it, I'm done waiting, I'll just get a 5800X and call it a day since that part was readily available due to not being so popular. However, that probably won't work anymore for the R7 7800X. On the flip side, during Zen 3's launch, AMD didn't really have any competition from Intel, however this time they've got Raptor Lake to worry about, so I don't think they have as much freedom to do what they want. Now, another thing that Greymon mentioned as a follow-up to this tweet was that AMD plans to have AM4 DDR4 compatible Zen 4 products, but it's just a plan. Not sure if it will be available. I do actually want to touch upon that, but later on in the video. Moving on, and a user on Twitter with the handle WXNOD posted a picture from what appears to be an event hosted by AMD in China. It was an offline dealer promotion meeting to give vendors information of the upcoming AM5 platform. Now what makes this picture interesting is that on the monitor in Mandarin, in the slides it states September 15th. At CES 2022, AMD did state that Zen 4 would be launching later on in the fall, but they never specified when. With the initial info, I was thinking sometime in early to mid-October, but September 15th is considerably earlier than I had expected. But hey, if it gets here sooner, then I'm not complaining. Along with the launch of the Ryzen 7000 series, that is also when you will see AMD's partners like ASUS, MSI, and Gigabyte release their boards to the market. I will say though, to take this with a grain of salt, dates are always subject to change, and this could even be a regional thing. 
Next thing I wanted to talk about was 3D Vcash. I wanted to talk about this because stacking this large pool of cash on a chiplet was one of the smartest moves AMD could have done for their CPUs. I will admit that when they initially showcased the 5800X 3D, I was skeptical about its performance and was a bit underwhelmed. However, once reviews came out, I was glad I was wrong and it's a pretty solid step up from Zen 3, in terms of gaming that is. I was also pleased to see that Gigabyte had released a BIOS update for the X370 Gaming 5 motherboard to support the 5800X 3D, and as a final hurrah, I bought one for my X370 motherboard. It's fantastic to be able to slot in such a fast CPU for an immense upgrade in a 5 year old motherboard without really having to change anything else in the system. Going back to the topic on hand, at CES 2022, AMD never specifically mentioned if they were going to feature this tech on their upcoming Ryzen 7000 series. The initial lineup it seems like won't have 3D vCache tech, however that's not to say that it won't be coming to Zen 4 either. Back in April 2022, Greymon on Twitter stated their sources told them that Zen 4 will have vCache, AMD is just waiting for the production line that the current 5800X 3D utilizes to become unoccupied. So they expect a Zen 4 CPU with 3D vCache in 2023. However, recently AMD held a presentation for their Financial Analyst Day 2022, and during that presentation, the following was stated. This technology significantly boosts the gaming performance by effectively reducing memory latency. And we wanted to bring the best to our gamers. Today, Ryzen 5800X3D is the best gaming processor in market, bar none. We are proud of what vCache technology is doing for us, and we're gonna feature this in Ryzen 7000 series later this year and in the future generation. So this confirms that AMD will indeed be bringing their 3D vCache tech to Zen 4, which is great news. Zen 4 by itself is already looking like a pretty decent leap over Zen 3 when it comes to performance in all categories, so you can just imagine how beastly it would be for gaming with a large pool of cash. Now a lot of people were hyping this statement up saying that, oh my god, he said feature 3D vCache in Ryzen 7000 later this year, meaning that they'll probably be releasing a Zen 4 3D CPU sometime in later Q4. I think there's two ways of interpreting this. The first is that he did actually mean that they're bringing the tech to Zen 4 later this year, or that all he meant to say was that the tech will indeed be featured in Zen 4 that is coming later this year, but not the actual 7000 3D CPU. It could go both ways when you think about it, I'm leaning towards the latter simply because it'd be odd for them to say this as it can hurt sales for their 7000 series. A lot of people might be thinking that hey if they're bringing 3D vCache to Zen 4 and it's coming out a little bit later than the initial Zen 4 launch then why wouldn't I just wait for that? The other thing I'm going to assume is that they're probably not going to be releasing a whole bunch of SKUs with 3D vCache and that they'll probably just release a 7800X 3D for those gamers that want the absolute best of the best performance. Unless they do a whole refresh a year later then that's probably a different story. But circling back to what Greymon said about AMD just waiting for production on the 5800X 3D to stop, they'll probably just replace that with a 7800X 3D. Again, I'm just speculating there are multiple ways this can go, but I'm just guessing based on recent trends. Regardless, Zen 4 3D just sounds like an absolute monster. And hey, if Intel's Raptor Lake does beat AMD by a significant margin when it comes to gaming, then AMD's got the perfect answer waiting for them. Don't you guys just love competition? The last thing I wanted to talk about was DDR4 support for Zen 4. Right now, the official word for Zen 4 is that there is no DDR4 support. If you're planning on getting a Zen 4 Ryzen 7000 CPU, you'll need a new 600 series motherboard which sports their new AM5 socket and requires DDR5 memory dims. Right off the bat, this is going to turn some people away, and the main reason for that is cost. DDR5 is still relatively new to the market, and it's quite expensive. A 16GB kit of DDR5 memory that has good speed and okayish timings can easily cost you over 150 US dollars, which is roughly about 3 times more than what a sweet spot DDR4 kit would cost. Unfortunately, that extra premium doesn't go towards more performance. I mean, theoretically it should. But when it comes to real world performance and gaming, the vast majority of software aren't benefiting from the higher bandwidth, at least not yet. The price obviously jumps up significantly for larger capacity kits, and now you're looking at paying the same price for your RAM as the CPU. So you end up paying a premium for a component that hasn't yet reached maturity, when you could have spent that extra money towards a component that would make a difference, whether it'd be a faster GPU or a higher core count CPU because you use it for production workloads. 
Circling back to what Greymon said about AMD planning on bringing Zen 4 to the AM4 platform, I can't really foresee them bringing Zen 4 to AM4 because then they'd have to redesign the package to fit under the old IHS design. Perhaps we might see AM5 DDR4 motherboards instead. It just seems like the easiest route to me. There was actually a recent leak posted by video cards that ASRock plans to release Z790 motherboards with DDR4 support. Z790 is the new chipset Intel will be releasing alongside their upcoming 13th gen Raptor Lake CPUs, and if Intel ends up supporting DDR4 and DDR5 for their next gen CPUs, while AMD will only support DDR5, then Intel will end up swaying a lot of buyers to their side. A DDR4 is just dirt cheap right now, it's really cost effective, and if I was to build a new system in the upcoming future with a next gen CPU and platform, I would go with the one that supports DDR4 and then spend that extra money towards a better GPU or the next gen GPUs which will be coming out at around the same time. I think AMD is in a much tighter spot this time around. They should allow their partners to manufacture boards that support DDR4 and DDR5, so users have the freedom to choose whichever suits their preferences and budget the best. They also have more competition on their hands this time around, so they can't really go too crazy when it comes to pricing their CPUs. I am looking forward to AMD's Zen 4 Ryzen 7000 CPUs as much as the next guy, but all I'm saying is that this time around, they've got their work cut out for them, and they have to be smart about this. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.